Hi, okay, so Roseanne here, and today I am in conversation with Jerry Larkin in Eugene, Oregon. Um, so Jerry is an author with Rodmel Press, and uh, she is the daughter of an IBM engineer and wildly brilliant artist, and she grew up in various cities in the United States and in Sydney, Australia. So after earning a doctorate in policy analysis, she joined Deloitte as a management consultant in 1988. Um, she attended the Maitreya Buddhist Seminary from 1992 to 1995 when she was ordained as a Dharma teacher. And then in 1999, she started Still Point Zen Buddhist Temple in the heart of Detroit, where she was a guiding teacher for its first five years. So she's the author of seven books on Buddhism, and we're going to be talking about her eighth book today called Close to the Ground, which is about to be released in May by Rodmel Press. So hi, Jerry. Hi. How are you doing this morning? Well, thank you. It's a Girl. good morning. <laughs> it's a good morning? Excellent. Um, so, your, your new book, Close to the Ground, um, outlines and goes into, de in, into detail um, ab about the seven factors of enlightenment. So, do you want to just give us a little rundown of these seven, these seven factors? Oh, and I'm happy to. I may need a cheat sheet because once I write a book, I forget almost everything in it. But... Uh, the the factors are important because they're positive, and I think a lot of people think that spiritual practice is about hard work and sometimes negative things. So the first, and for me the most important one, is mindfulness, because I need to be reminded of mindfulness myself all the time. And then curiosity is huge for spiritual work. I'm mm. sure you know that. I mean, you're curious by nature, I'm guessing. Energetic yeah. effort, which in the land of yoga, I'm sure people can appreciate. Um, ease, you know, really being at ease with the situation matters a lot, mm -hmm. whatever the situation is. Let's see, joy, yay, finally it shows up. <laughs> concentration, which is mindfulness, I always say uh, concentration is mindfulness on steroids. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one thing to be mindful, but to really concentrate on something so there's nothing but the concentration. And equanimity, which is Having a sense of okayness with whatever happens. Mm. Did I get seven? I tried to count and lost count. See what I mean about the mindfulness part? <laughs> I lost count too. That sounds like a pretty good overview. That's that's what I recall from the from the from the book. I really like okayness. Okayness was a phrase that came up and yes. just kind of having a sense of okayness with things. It's huge. Yeah, they're not expecting things to be too perfect. They're right, right. because they aren't. And yeah. Even if they're perfect right now. In the next breath, they might not be so perfect. And exactly. the other side of that is if they're not perfect right now, in the next breath, it could be just perfect. But either way, it's okay. True, yeah. Um, so you kind of alluded to, to the mindfulness being what you think maybe the most important or the or most groundbreaking. Can you say a little bit more about that and the importance of, of, uh, of mindfulness? Yes. I think for us, for Westerners, and I'll only speak for myself, we forget that life is passing us by so quickly. I mean, mm -hmm. life is just like moving through us at the rate of light mm -hmm. that we miss a big part of what's going on in our lives when we're not paying attention to it. So mindfulness is about paying attention to right now, to what's going on right now. And the surprise of it is when we do, and I'm guessing you know this yourself, it's like a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, colors are brighter, sounds are more clear, we hear levels and sounds. Senses are just sharper and just fat, more fabulous. And that all literally grows out of mindfulness. But we have to be mindful for it to happen. Mm. Yeah. Which of the seven factors would you say is most difficult to, uh, to stay with on a, on, a, on a daily basis in your kind of everyday life? Yeah, for, for me, uh, well, for me, the mindfulness is something I have to remind myself all the time. I mean, if I was... If I had a new tattoo, it would be walk, pay attention, right at my arm. Um, I think right now, given the way the world is, ease is very hard for all of us mm. because th so much is coming at each one of us that it's hard to remember that things are okay down at the bottom of it. I mean, just with all the crises that happen in the world and with you know war hanging over all of our heads no matter where we live, there's a worryingness that's mm. taken over that gets in the way, not to not worry necessarily, but it gets in the way of feeling that deeper 
things are all all rightness. So ease is really, really important. Mm-hmm. And I think that people can be often drawn to spiritual practice as a way to, to deal with that anxiety or to deal yes. with that worry. And sometimes it can almost be an escape as well. It can be, you can kind of bury yourself in your practices and in your community to, you know, put your head in the sand to avoid the, the, the crises and the trauma and the stress of the world. Yeah, I think for a lot of us, that's where we start. What my experience with Zen is, that doesn't last very long, because Mm. if you're sitting on a cushion, Mm -hmm. it's not going to (laughs) hide. Yeah. So it's about learning how to to work with it and and use it, and ironically to lean into it. I mean, one of the ironies of anxiety is the more we can lean into it, the more we can see how porous it is. Right. And we can really see that if we focus on right now, a lot of the anxiety is about past tense and future tense. Mm -hmm. So right now we can be okay, Mm -hmm. you know, that we have an exam tomorrow or we have to teach a yoga class and we don't know them. You know, it's just really interesting. Yeah. 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 Um, So you, you, I'm interested in the the transition from your kind of like when you're talking about like the the sort of uh, like leaning into it and and easefulness and, and, you know, staying in the present, your background it sounds like you had this very kind of like ambitious, driven professional life. So where, how was the transition from this kind of, you know, policy analysis to, oh, I know, to, to, to practice? To monk, yeah, to, <laughs> to reclusive monk, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how did that happen? Well, it's a natural progression. I mean, just for, for you and all of the people who read your blog to know, once you give yourself permission to be who you are, it's really fun to see what that ends up being. So part of it is just our giving ourselves permission to just be who we are and then we get to kind of watch and go, oh my gosh, that's what it is? That's what it's going to be? Hmm. For me, the uh, trigger, and for a lot of people who end up on a spiritual path, there's a trigger. might be heartbreak. My, my trigger was that I got uh, two eye twitches. Oh. And the first eye twitch, the, the only problem was that my eye twitched when I was nervous in a meeting with a client. So at first, when I got it in one eye, I would just hold my eye like this and talk to people, which meant they thought I was really paying attention to my I, mean, I didn't really that year financially. But, the, but what happened was when the other eye started to twitch, they didn't twitch in sync. Oh, okay. So I couldn't just sit like that, although I was tempted to. But one day I was driving home at night from a business meeting, and I had to pull off on the side of the road because I couldn't see it because my eyes were twitching so badly. I mean, this tells you how bad I was. Hmm. <laughs> or how much coffee I used to drink. <laughs> so what happened was I went to my eye doctor, and oh my God, was in. I asked her if I could have um, little band aids in this skin tone, so that when I was with clients, I could just tape my eyes up. And, <laughs> and she said, she said, no, 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 no. First of all, they don't exist. But second of all, <laughs> this is stress. And I was hmm. like, stress? You know, I'm not stressful. I'll just give me the, you know, the band aids. So she said, you should try meditation. And I honestly didn't know anything about meditation at all. And to tell you the truth, at first I thought she said mediation. But oh my God, she wants me to go home and argue with myself in a mirror and whichever side wins. It just shows your mind state and you're so embedded in your work. (laughs) So I, I went to the only place that had meditation in the yellow pages in the phone book in those days. And it was the Ann Arbor Zen Buddhist Temple. And what shocked me, I have to go back and say, my training is all as a scientist in a way. Mm-hmm. You know, I would, I'm a big statistics person. I like to, you know, the proof needs to be on paper. I don't believe it. I was that kind of a person. So here I go into this meditation class, and three weeks later, the eye twitches were gone. Hmm. Interesting. And so I just kept following that string because I couldn't believe it. And so the more I sat, the more I heard about these Buddhist teachings, which I knew nothing about. And then they had me. I mean, they had me hook, line, and sinker by the end of the first year. Wow. That, yeah, that's yeah. a, that's a, it, it's true that the trigger, the, the body, the messages from the body. Yes. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can fool your mind, but you can't fool your body. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. Experience. Yeah. Um, so how did, how did, coming back to the book here, um, how did Close to the Ground come to be? Like, where, where was the idea for, what was the process in writing it? How did these, sure. how long did it take? Oh, yeah, I, I'll try to answer all those and then you can forget if I forget. Um, books for me take about, actually, they take about nine or ten months. They only take that long because it's, I, I just need to get it out of my system. It's there and I have to just, like, get it out. I handwrite them. Okay. Uh, so it took maybe ten months, I mean, to re, to read it again and clean it up. It took about a year. 
the, tr the there were two triggers. Trigger one was when we all were so harmed by this last recession, which mm -hmm. seems to not be going away, I saw how hard people's lives were. I mean, not just in my family, but every people were so harmed by that or have been so harmed by that that I wanted to say, wait, 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 there's this positive gift here of pos the positive sides of spiritual practice that we can all have. So part of me was like, wait, 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 you know, mm -hmm. joy, curiosity, don't forget, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing, which is, as a woman teacher, has been really important to me, has been to remind people that being a teacher, whether you're a yoga teacher or a Zen master or a minister of a large church, does not mean you're perfect. Mm. That even Buddha, you know, at 85, died of food poisoning. So you don't ever let go of your life as a human with all the ups and downs of humanness. Mm -hmm. So I decided I would use my own life as exhibit A. Mm -hmm. You know, not that my kids are so thrilled about that, but it, I just really wanted people to remember that there is no perfection mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. any teacher. Mm -hmm. And that um, the importance of being humble and ordinary is critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's definitely a very common, a common thread. Like there are so many stories about, you know, your grandchildren, you know, apartments you'd lived in, like the garage. <laughs> 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 and, and, and and also, too, like, you, you kind of took us on the journey, too, like, I, you know, from Chicago to, you know, when you're a student in New York to yes. at the, at the you know, the the Buddhist community that you're involved with in Detroit. So we kind of, kind of, you know, it's kind of a little journey through your life as well, though it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily a memoir, per se, and it wasn't really organized chronologically. So we got these kind of glimpses here and there. And, um... And there's also, I like the, there's a theme too about, about cleaning. Like you talked about kind of scrubbing, like rolling your yes. sleeves up and doing the work and getting down to business. And so, yeah, it was definitely very humble and very approachable. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So thank you very much for your time this morning. And um, so check out Jerry's book, uh, Close to the Ground. Do you have a website, Jerry? Or? I don't. I do everything through Rodmel. So people can get to me through Rodmel. They can email me at authorjerryvarkin at gmail. And I answer every email. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Great. Great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.